Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead. What are we doing today out in the garden? Well, guys, it's getting that time. I need to start getting some seeds started. And I'm out here trying to determine what I'm going to plant worse. I made me some little markers, wrote on the names of everything I'm going to plant. Me and Colton's been out here walking around the garden, sticking them in the beds, kind of looking after I stuck them in the beds, seeing if I need to change anything up. One of the things you don't want to do is, example, if you grow in two or three different varieties of summer squash or squash, you don't want them planted in this bed, this bed, and that bed because they'll cross-pollinate. Now, yes, this garden ain't that big and a bee can fly from right here to over yonder and cross-pollinate it, but ain't nothing I can do about that, so I try to split them up. Cucumbers the same way. I may have, I'm going to have a cucumber growing right here, an Ashley cucumber. Then I got some more cucumbers I'm spacing out through there. So I walk around out here and I put my tags down, get me an idea of where I'm gonna plant stuff and how many plants I'm gonna need at each. Now if y'all hear Colton over there squealing, he's standing right behind y'all in the dirt pile, which I got on my microphone cause it's windy, so I don't know how much it's picking him up over there. But in this bed right here, we're gonna have cauliflower. It's just gonna be about eight or 10 heads of cauliflower planted in this bed. This bed here is gonna be two Fuya jalapeno peppers. And that's Fuya jalapenos, that's, that's heatless jalapenos. Right here we're gonna have about four Ashley cucumbers growing up the trellis. Down here in this bed we're gonna have about four California wonder bell peppers. This five foot round bed here, we're gonna have some Brussels sprouts. Five foot bed here, we're gonna have us some cabbage. And when I'm planting this, I'll tell y'all what varieties and stuff we're doing. In this bed right here, we're gonna have some broccoli. We come on around the corner over here, we're gonna have two heatless habaneros. And I don't know if y'all can see on around the corner, but I'll turn y'all around before we get over there. But starting in the in-ground gardening right here. I'm going to have some rows right here empty. I may plant some onions on, but somewhere here is going to be a section. It's going to be about two or three zucchini squash. And then, like I said, the rest of that row hey, on each end will be... Hey, Papa. Hey, Colton, tell everybody hello today. Say, so how y'all doing? How y'all doing? <laughs> but let me turn y'all around so y'all can see the garden area here, and we'll continue working our way that way. But now on this first row right here, guys, is where my tomato plants is going to be. It's going to be eight tomato plants, and like I said, I, I ain't got the varieties. Of, it's going to be two of each. It's, I'm going to have two Kellogg breakfasts, two brandy wines, two Indian stripes. Two cherry keys. I can't remember what all, but it's gonna be eight tomato plants on this next row. But like I said, when I'm planting this stuff, I'm gonna have another video going on. I'll tell you exactly what the varieties are of each. Over there on that back row where the trellises are, starting on the end on both rows, is gonna be one egg plant. I'm gonna have two black beauty egg plants. <laughs> He's over there telling y'all something. We're going to have a trellis of rattlesnake green beans. Then the next two spots and one on each row is going to be two more eggplants. One's going to be a fairy tale and one's going to be a white eggplant I'm going to try. The next trellis is going to be some Kentucky Wonder green beans. And then we're going to have some little cherry tomatoes. We're going to have one plant of, I think it's Brad's Atomic Grape. One summer sunset i think it's called and one lollipop and it was something else I can't go there i can't remember what variety it is i got them all wrote down on a piece of paper and this trellis right here on the end i ain't sure yet if i'm gonna put some christmas llama beans on it again this year or, or what i'm gonna put at this moment but let's move on over down toward the end and we'll continue on now guys, all of my herbs down through here this year, I don't know if any of them's gonna make it and come back. 
or not. Or I'm gonna have to replant. I got all herbs I done planted in the house just getting started. But my time right there, it looks like it's gonna be all right. That's garlic chives. They looking like they may be all right. That's garlic chives. And then my little green onions I was over winter and them there look like they may surprise. Survived. But guys, I'm gonna just try to hold the camera here. That little bed right there gonna be two savannah sweet peppers. That right there gonna be my honey do the light. I made a plant this year that was up there by the house last year that grew so big. Guys, right here in this water trough this year, I'm gonna plant some summer dance cucumber. Now that's the cucumber that I grew on the back fence back there that grew that long one just playing last year. I'm gonna see if I can train them to go up this ladder string ladder hen. I might have to put some more strings on it or might take a piece of cow panel or a piece of wire and put it on it, I don't know. But See if I can train them to go up this ladder. Over here in this next water trough right here, it's gonna be some spinach is what I'm thinking as of today. I changed that from what I started. I think I'm gonna put spinach in there. I had on there to put radishes, but at the last minute I'm gonna put spinach because I got a couple little pots I can put radishes in. I'm the only one to eat radishes. Of course, what's over there covered up is my strawberries and then my tractor tires over there and my strawberries. Yeah, them strawberries. You love strawberries, don't you? The guy starting down this fence line over here, them two little pots sitting on the ground on each end. If I can get lavender to grow, it's gonna probably just be a lavender in there. If it ain't, it's gonna be some kind of flower pot. These top two up here is gonna be where I plant my radishes. Like I said, cause that's enough, cause I'm the only one eats radishes. The bottom down there, I ain't sure yet. They may just be some pretty flowers or Something else might come up, but right now they just open. Maybe put some pansy flowers. I got some of them in there starting. Might put a bigger zinnia right here in the middle and some little panniers in the bottom. I don't know. Right here I got some onions that I started. They actually survived the winter. Of course, this right here is our asparagus bed. That orange pot's just sitting there. I ain't got no plans for it, but this tub right here is going to have some a zinnia planted in it, and that zinnia, tub back there on the back corner is going to have some zinnia planted in it. Now this water trough here is a new one I've come up with. Got the other day from a fella. That's going to be my carrots. I'm going to seed it with carrots. And of course, my musky dimes are still the two strings of musky dimes. Hope I get a little more musky dimes. This will be their second year, so maybe I'll get a little more musky dimes than I did last year. Coming on around these beds right over here, this is going to be probably going to start out with just two green egg squash plants. And then as they start getting older, as the heat start getting to them, before I see that happening, I'll plant me another one just to seed in the ground. But that's big enough for two, I know, easily. This bed here is going to be some butterhead lettuce, which is what was here this fall. This bed right here is going to be some, I forgot what variety it is, another head lettuce. I think it may be a romaine head lettuce. I'm going to plant around the outside, and then all in the inside is going to be just mixed leaf lettuce. But guys, this one here has got a big stump right in the middle, and the dirt ain't very deep right here in the in the center so that's why i chose to do head lettuce right here so i can go around the outside and then do some leaf lettuce and maybe the dirt deep enough i can grow leaf lettuce right over the top of that stump in the center now these onions here they half of them survived a couple of them died you can see there but i thought all of them was dead much freezing we got this year but and it ain't over yet i'm sure we're gonna get some more Let's see, I don't know if y'all can see me off over over here, but this is my barrel right here. This is going to be our early spring cucumbers. I got to spring my wire cage and go back around it to see this is where I had things planned on paper and then changed it. 
I got that barrel sitting off over there. I had what I was going to do with cucumbers, and then I thought, well, that's too close. I can do them two tomatoes on that barrel over there. Do my cucumbers on this one, and that spaces my cucumbers out with my different varieties. That a way to help keep them from cross-pollinating. Like I said, now, a bee going to fly this far, but it, it, you'll be at less cross-pollinating than you would if they side by side. But guys, cross-pollinating really ain't going to affect your taste. You just can't save no seeds and plant that next year and think you're going to get what you planted. If they cross-pollinate it and you plant your seeds next year, you ain't going to get the true variety. So anytime you got a garden and it ain't no bigger than an acre, the odds are, unless you got them covered and you really doing some hard work, you're going to get some cross-pollinating from your bees. Now, can I, can, let's see, I think y'all can see me on back here. This little pot right here is going to be a cayenne hot pepper. Of course, this in here still got my strawberries in it. I had them covered good this winter. This back here is a new little bed. Can y'all tell what that is? That right there is going to be lettuce. But guys, that it's right there. It's a new bed. Yeah, that's our new bed, ain't it? Hey guys, do our new bed. You tell them about it. It's a new bed. Yeah. But guys, this right here was a outside heating and air unit. I just took the condenser out of it and the fan, and you got this metal outside frame that makes a good tall bed. Now, I could have cut it into two and made two short beds, but I really didn't need that many beds. So I just got this one here, and it's going to be some leaf mixed lettuce, some different types of leaf lettuce. No, come on, come on, come help, Papa. Now, guys, we're coming right on around the corner right here, and I'm going to go on and pull this off. But for you that has been watching my videos, y'all remember me covering this up because the freeze got my rainbow chart. Well, I cut it off and I said I'm going to cover it up and I'm going to see if any of it come back. Well, I can tell you right now, this ain't worth doing because it Ain't but one of them got any life. Now that in there is doing good. But now that I done uncovered it, if we don't get no more heavy freeze, I might at least still have one in here. But this is going to be Swiss chard again. But you can see, they don't come back after they've been froze. So this has been on here for over a month now. And as much warm temperature we've had, if any of that was going to put on some more green, it would have come back. But the Swiss chard didn't withstand that much cold. The ones I'm pulling out here, now there's one right there. That one right there may make a comeback. It's got a little bit of green on it. If it does, that'll be two that'll have a head start. Again, that bed's going to be Swiss chard again. Of course, this is my prism kale. What's left of it, you can tell the cold weather has worked on it. But these four, what is that, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know about this little plant right here. But them six right there, we don't get no more hard, hard freeze. I don't know, pull that off. Papa was cutting it with a knife. You, here, you won't want to go feed the rabbits? Here, go feed the rabbits. Go feed the rabbits. He, go, he said, guys, I'm going to feed the rabbit, guys. <laughs> Show them. Show them what you're going to feed the rabbits. Show them. He said bye-bye. But anyway, this is going to be, I'm going to have some more prism kale. I mean... Yeah, I'm going to have some more prism kale. I'm sorry I got distracted. Filling that bed back up, and this will be prism kale. This next bed right back here, it's going to be 
red Russian keel. Our tractor tire is going to be potatoes again. And of course, this is strawberry still in this one that's covered up. They still green. I'm going to have a lot of pruning and cleaning up to do when it, but I ain't uncovering them until it gets time. Now right back here, I got a new trailer truck tire cut out, cut the side wall out. That's going to be potatoes. And this tire right back here is going to be potatoes. So I'm doing more potatoes this year. Them potatoes doing so good in that tractor tire, I'm going to see if I can get a few more out of these tires. I ain't trying that tower again. Y'all seen that video with me didn't work out with my tower. Little, little bed right here is going to be some mustard greens we can eat on. Now I'm going to bring y'all back in because I know I'm getting far enough away y'all can't see good. I thought you was going to feed that to that rabbit. Go stick it through the fence and feed it to Gwen. Go feed Gwen. <laughs> you going to feed Kelly. So y'all ain't confused to where y'all looking at now. This is where I said it was going to be the red Russian. This tractor tire here was going to be the potatoes. And then them two other tires that I cut the... They were trailer truck tires, but you cut the side walls out of them like I did this tractor tire. You get about a, almost a three foot round circle there. So that's going to be potatoes. Right here, guys, where I had me some good Texas onions growing. It was going to try to overwinter them, but we got too many hard freezes too, too close together, and it killed them. But I got some more seeded in the greenhouse, and this is where we're going to plant this bed here full of onions. Back here on the back, this bed right here is going to be rutabagas. Yeah. This little pot right here is going to be another cayenne hot pepper. So I'm going to have two peppers. You notice every pepper plant i got is two of each. And this is going to be two hot peppers. Uh-uh, don't be pulling her tags out. That's one thing I have trouble with my tags. Old hot right here wants to come by and coat the man wants to pull all my tags out. This in-ground bed back here, that's going to be three, maybe four summer squash. I'm probably going to plant three to start out with. And then after I see things starting, bugs getting them, squash Vine borers or whatever starts getting them, I go on and pop me another seed. I learned last year to just don't worry about trying to fight them. Just keep popping you some new seeds in the ground, guys. And squash sheaths come up so fast, you can keep your squash going like that just by planting your new seeds instead of spending money on trying to kill them bugs. And Cause like I said, them squash bug borers, it's just once they come in, it's hard to keep them going. So the best thing to do is Keep popping your seed in and keep your new plant coming at all times. And that's the plan for right here. And of course, them tires back there, my peppermint and spearmint. I don't know. They are dead. Last year, they didn't, even though we had that snow and ice, it killed them back. But they still stayed a little green all year. This year, they dead as all get out. So I don't know if them's going to come back or not. Then we got our two blueberry bushes right there. Now my overflow, I'm probably gonna have a couple of tomato plants cause I always plant one more of each variety that I need. So I'm probably gonna put about four or five tomato plants down that back fence back there. Now guys, when you're planting your garden, that's why I'm out here, I done learned. Like I said, once you want to divide up, if you got different varieties of squash, at least space them out as far as you can. Same thing with cucumbers. If you got different varieties, space them out as far as you can. It helps with the cross pollinating. But also watch your shade. You notice all my cauliflower and such like that is up there. It's got shade trees, so it's gonna get my morning sun. And then in the afternoons, it's gonna be shaded. It grows better. Also, right here on this fence line, and anything on that end of that fence line has got this tree. Last year, that's why that cucumber went so long in the dead heat of the summer because it was shaded in the morning and then again in the afternoon. It got plenty enough sunshine hour-wise to grow cucumbers, 
but it got enough shade in the dead heat of the summer to keep it from burning it up. So that's why I'm finna try me some tomato plants back there on that fence row. And now I ain't gonna plant them in no tubs or nothing. I'm gonna just till the dirt in the soil, put some of my compost, and mend it up. I mend it up and have my cages around them back there at the fence. Now guys, right out here in this outside garden on the back right here, my first row this year is where my okra's gonna be. I'm moving it out of the fenced in area. The first row on this outside is going to be okra. And then if I need it, I'm going to make a second row. It'll be just my leftover plants. If I have extra plants that I don't want to get rid of, or I might just put a second row and plant. And then after that, I'm going to have rows this way with my drip irrigation. But the one half of it's going to be cantaloupe. And the back side, the whole edge of the garden, back half of the garden is going to be watermelons. That's going to be called Colton's garden, because Colton loves his watermelons, don't you? Come tell them about your watermelons. Tell them, so we're going to plant watermelons everywhere right there. Everywhere right there, he said. But guys, what you looking at right here? That is the best fertilizer injector that a man can get for their money for their garden. That's your chickens and your little pen that you can move around. Right now I put five of my hens out here. And every two days I move them up. And once I get over that whole garden, of course I've been putting my rabbit poop nice. out there and some quail poop, tilling it in. But I'm letting my chickens self-fertilize. Self is that's what I call my fertilizer injector. They injecting my fertilizer right now. And that is the best fertilizer injector a man can get for his money. Not only that, let me show you what else you get. Now when you have one of these style fertilizer injectors on your homestead, look at him. You get breakfast in return. We didn't get but two today. Yesterday we got three, but it's still a little early. I usually average three. These hens have done got older. And one thing I don't like is they done got the word eight nest in the box and pooping in the box. Coaching, we finna have to change out the hay. Couple of trying to shake it down. They got too much poop in the hay. They ain't got poop all over. Like I said, guys, that's one of the best fertilizer injectors you can have on your homestead because ain't nothing going to beat your chicken poop and your rabbit poop for fertilizer. Everybody's worried about this fertilizer price. Price is going up this year or it may be hard to get fertilizer and this and that. If you got chicken poop and you got rabbit poop, you don't need all that fertilizer. Uh -huh. Now I will say the one thing I do that I, that I ain't found an alternative for, not for easiness, is my calcium that I use to put under my uh, tomato plants. Other than that, I don't buy hardly no fertilizer at all. I use it. Hey, you want to open it? I want some more candy. All right, we'll have to go to the house if you want some more candy. He wants to open that, and then he tells me he wants some more candy. You want some more candy, you want a popsicle? Mr. Boy, tell you. Guys, he come over and just turn y'all over. He wanting to go get some candy. So I guess we better go over here and get some candy. Yeah. But guys, that's a little quick update of what I'm doing. You, you talking to him, you gonna tell him. Say, that's a little quick update. Tell a quick update. On what we're doing in our garden. What to do with our garden. And how we're gonna plant it this year. Plant it this year. We thank y'all for watching. Y'all come back and watch it grow. God bless. God bless. See y'all next time. See y'all next time. <laughs>